This video will be about measuring intelligence. Intelligence is difficult to define. It's considered a very complex trait. A long question has been nature or nurture? Is intelligence due to genes or to environment? Scientific research has considered the overall sizes of brains, the glucose metabolic rate while people are problem solving, and the complexity and speed of brain waves and they've concluded that intelligence is mostly based on our genes. One of the research studies is a twin study where you find identical twins who were separated at an early age and reared apart. These studies have found that the IQ scores of identical twins reared apart are highly correlated. In fact, in general, adopted children are more likely to score on an IQ test like their birth parents rather than their adopted parents. But in the end, the biggest question of all is still, what exactly is intelligence? Charles Spearman was an English psychologist. He analyzed existing intelligent tests and scores using a new statistical measure called factor analysis. He looked at the correlations among performance on a variety of intellectual tasks, like those on the IQ test, and felt that he was measuring something real and not just an, a mathematical abstraction. He proposed a theory with two factors of intelligence, the general intelligent factor, called the G factor, and the special intelligent factor, called S factor. He felt that under certain conditions, the score of a person at a mental test could be divided into two parts, one which stayed the same on all the tests and one varied from test to test. This theory was then a general factor, G, and a special or differing factor, S. His theory was a major platform for other researchers on intelligence. He was heavily influenced by Galton, and he also advocated restricting reproduction to people that had high G. The basic idea of the G factor is that people tend to do well or do poorly across multiple types of tests, thus indicating there's something in general that's going on with the intelligence. The G factor is normally distributed across the general population, and it suggests that it's probably a product of several genes that interact with our environment. Most measures of G positively correlate with what we consider the conventional, conventional successful people. Those with good incomes, with high academic achievement, good job performance, and career prestige often have high G factor. The negative correlates, such as dropping out of school, unplanned childbearing, or poverty, are negative and negatively correlate with G factor. Research studies show that G increases moderately over time in countries that are being developed, correlating with the country's improvements in nutrition, health, and education. So there is an environmental factor. Let's look at factor analysis. Factor analysis is a statistical method that describes the variability or the variance among our variables in our data. If we have multiple variables that affect our outcomes, some of them may have more influence than others. So we come up with a linear combination of the variables and the potential factors, plus some error terms. The coefficients in our linear combinations sort of give an idea of the weight of each importance of a factor towards the variance in the data. A typical factor analysis asks these four major questions. How many unique factors are needed to explain the relationships among our variables or our data? What is the nature of those factors? How well do those factors explain our observed data? And how much random or unique variance does each variable include? Factor analysis is used in lots of different sciences and commercial arenas that deal with large quantities of data. We're going to look at a really simplified example of factor analysis that hopefully will help you understand better. We're going to go see the Muppets, so hang on. Here we are at the Muppets. So what exactly is a factor and what's factor analysis? Well, a factor is any underlying concept that can explain the variability in a given data set. So let's take Muppets as an example. Here we have a picture of a lot of the Muppets. And if I ask you to write down all the adjectives that might explain how they're alike and how they're different, 
you might mention things like, well, they're furry, they're colorful, they have googly eyes, they have funny arms, they have big mouths. All of those adjectives we could use uh, to describe these Muppets. Now, if we went out and kind of looked at, well, which one of those adjectives does a better job of showing how they're the same or a better job of showing how they're different, then we could think of those as factors. And then we could come up with, say, the most important two to five factors that most people would agree make a difference in the Muppets. Those factors would explain more of the variance between the Muppets than maybe some other ones like height. This is sort of a very simplified idea of what factor analysis is. We look at all the possible descriptors or factors for our given data set of what we got 15 Muppets here and then we look at which ones explain the variance the best? And how many do we really need? Which ones are really important? Can we narrow it down to two? Do we need five? Or do we need eight to really explain what's going on here? I hope this video has helped you to understand about Spearman's G-factor and his factor analysis.